Okay, so this week uh, we'll be doing lab six. So you log on to Canvas, click on modules, scroll down and click on the tongue constant of RC circuit. That'll be the one we'll be doing this week. So let me bring up the, uh, the, uh, the lab activity. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, so the experiment, uh, the goal of this experiment is to find tongue constant of two RC circuits. And so uh, capacitor, what is a capacitor? Capacitor basically is the uh, a device that, uh, that is used to store electrical energy. So uh, you, you probably heard, you know, a lot about, char you know, people talk about charging, charging and discharging a capacitor or the battery. Basically, when you charge a capacitor, you, uh, you know, you are, uh, you know, adding charge to the capacitor, or uh, uh, you're adding charge to the capacitor. So uh, the capacitor had basically comes with the two two plates uh, of opposite sign. Uh, so let's say you have two plates. One it carries a positive charge, the other one carries negative charge. So with this two different, uh, with the uh, with the two plates of oppositely charged, it's going to create an electric field uh, uh, between the two plates. And so the uh, so the energy that is stored uh, by the capacitor is electrical energy, that is uh, you know because of the electric field uh, created by the uh, by the uh, the two plates. So uh, a capacitor, uh, there are two different kinds of capacitor. One with the polarity and one does not have a polarity. So the one with the polarity, the one with the pol polarity would uh, would often indicate by some. Like uh, for example, by the uh, by the little round bond on one end that indicate a negative end, negative polarity, or it has a dash. Uh, it has the uh, the arrow pointing pointing in this location that indicate a negative end. Okay, and uh, the uh, the numeric the value of the capacitance which it, which is in vara in honor of uh, Faraday, vara. Um, the um, the uh, the value will be indicated will be printed on the cover of the uh, of the capacitor of the capacitor, and the letter here indicate will indicate the uh, the tolerance or the uncertainty uh, of the uh, or the variations of the capacitor within this range. Okay, all right. So for an RC circuit, basically, is that you have a resistor, you have a capacitor, you're going to connect connect them in series. So the uh, the diagram will look like this. So you have an RC circuit. So you have the uh, you no. Know, this is the symbol for resistor, and this is the symbol for capacitor. It ca comes with the capacitance, and this is the resistor. So the resistor is uh, is the one that dissipate energy, and capacitor is the one that can store electrical energy. And this is the switch, and this is the battery. And so when you uh, you know push the uh, the switch off, you uh, you know it's going to uh, create a RC circuit in connection with the. Uh, uh, with the battery, so uh, during this process, the capacitor is being charged. Okay, so this is uh, during the charging process, and we can see that the current will come in, uh, will come out of the uh, the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the battery or the power uh, power source. It's going to flow through the upper end and then come uh, and then go through the uh, capacitor, go through the uh, resistor, and comes back to the. Uh, uh, come back to the power source. So when you write up the uh, uh, when you apply Kirchhoff rule and write up uh, you know and then uh, you can set up equation based on the conservation of energy. So we have the uh, you know this uh, if you remember this is the one uh, you know this is the directions of the battery. Okay, so you have the current that goes through this, and we assume that uh, the loop and the current are in the same direction. So you will write down the first turn that will be m, and then minus. So keep going until you reach the uh, a capacitor which is being charged. So so uh, so the capacitor will have the value of the charge over the capacitor. That will be the the voltage across the capacitor uh, across the capacitor. So it's charge over the capacitance and then minus I R and the whole thing is equal to zero. Okay, so this is during the charging process. Now for the R C circuit, we know that charge charge is being continuously deposited onto the capacitor. So, so this being uh, the positive here, so you would expect that this is more positive than the other one. So this, 
So then it creates an electric field between these two plates, okay? And so when you have this equation and realizing that uh, your M, uh, you know, your Q, uh, your charge and the current are related to each other. So your Q, uh, your I current is equal to the, uh, 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 you know, uh, dq over dt, the time rate of change of charge. Then uh, you know you can uh, you know replace replace your q by uh, by the uh, expression of the i, and then uh, you can set the equation, and that becomes the uh, becomes the um, the equation like this. So you will have you have you have the charge like this. So uh, the M, electromotive force, M minus IR minus Q over C, that's equals to zero. And then re realizing that your uh, your current, your current and uh, your current and charge are related to each other. So so this equation because uh, becomes the uh, uh, the differential equation, and then you can solve for the uh, the solution. And the solution, uh, what we found is that charge now is the function of time. It is not static. Uh, it is uh, you know uh, changing with time. So uh, it is has it has the expression of capital Q, which is the maximum charge that can be on the capacitor uh, times one minus e to the minus t over R C. Likewise, the voltage across the capacitor is the uh, uh, the uh, the m the maximum voltage that uh, that can be attained by um, by the uh, capacitor, and then uh, and then uh, and then times one minus e to the minus t over R C, and your current. Your current is also the function of time, which is the I naught times E to the minus U over RC. And this indicates that your current uh, is not static, uh, it's actually changing with time. So then just based on this, you can see that when T equals to zero, okay, when T equals to zero, the current is actually the maximum. And when T uh, approaches infinity, uh, so you have the E to the minus infinity, that will actually give you zero value. Um, that makes sense as well because once you, once the capacitor is fully, di uh, once the capacitor is fully charged, you cannot add any more charge on the capacitor, so the current will cease to move. Uh, the the current will cease because no more charge can be deposited. So when T approaches to infinity, there is no current, and we can also look at the behavior of the charge and capacitor uh, and the voltage. So uh, you know when T equals to zero, you can see that there is no charge on the capacitor, and that makes sense during the charging process. And when T approaches infinity, you can see that your the charge on the capacitor is equal to the maximum charge Q. And likewise, for the voltage across the capacitor, initially there's no voltage. Uh, there's no voltage or uh, across the capacitor. But once it's being fully charged, uh, it becomes the uh, the maximum uh, you know voltage that the capacitor can have. So this is during the charging process. So you can see that during the charging process, you know. Uh, the charge on the capacitor can be represented by the uh, the green color curve. So it's charging exponentially like this, and then uh, and then reach once the, the time approaches to infinity or uh, after a long time, uh, is kind of level. Uh, you know, reach a plateau. It can cannot. Uh, there is no more charge can be added, and then uh, and then when you you can also simulate a a, char a discharging process. So. When you have a discharging process, is when you push the switch down. When you push the switch uh, switch down, you remove the battery from the circuit. So, uh, so in this case, the uh, the capacitor is discharging through the resistor. So, so that all the charge on the capacitor will actually be dissipated, uh, uh, you know, by the uh, by the resistor. Okay, and uh, so the uh, so the equation. The equations when you have a discharging process like this, you have the I R minus Q over C equals zero, and it becomes the uh, the first order the different. Uh, so you have the uh, first order the differential equation, and you can solve for the current, you can solve for the charge, you can solve for the voltage, and this. So these are the equations that describe uh, the uh, the uh, uh, these three quantity when during the discharging process. Okay, so when T equals zero. Uh, you have the current that is the maximum, but when T, T, uh, T approaches infinity, current ceases to flow. And uh, likewise, for the charge, initially you had the maximum charge on the capacitor, but when T approaches infinity, you have zero charge remaining on the capac capacitor. And, uh, and for voltage, uh, likewise. Okay, 
So during this charging and this, uh, and so for this charging, you can see that as a function of time, the charge will, will have a, a exponential decay like this, okay? It will drop like this. So during this charging or discharging process, we found that, uh, you know, there's a, you know, what we, a, a quantity which we call a time constant, which, uh, you know, in, indicate, you know, how many times. So the definition of time constant is that uh, how much time is required for the, uh, uh, for the charge to build up its charge up to, uh, you know, 60, uh, 63%, okay? So for example, uh, let's see, the quantity RC, which appears in the, uh, you know, in the exponential equations called the time constant, we use uh, this Greek letter tau to indicate the uh, time, constant. time constant. It has the same unit as time, so it, it is in seconds. So it represents the time it takes the current to decrease to one over e of its initial value. Okay. So in other words, in a, in a time interval. So basically, it's just a charge and a discharge. You know what is the quantity in relation to its maximum value? So in a time, uh, in a one time constant, the current becomes uh, you know uh, each uh, you know one over e of its value. So which means that after one time constant, the current will becomes uh, you know thirty three percent of its maximum value. Okay, or during the charging process, uh, you know, during the charging process, the, uh, uh, you know, the charge, uh, the charge will, uh, you know, the charge will increase from zero to 63% of its maximum value. Okay, because just based on this equation, one minus e to one time constant, that gives you 63%. Okay, so that's uh, during the charging or, do, uh, or the discharging, you know, or during the discharging, then the charge will drop to 73% of its maximum value. So, so time constant basically just tells you how many time constant will you reach the maximum value or, you know, that you can actually just based on, based on this equation, either from, uh, from the equation five or six, or, you know, or, you know, for the charging and discharging, you can actually, uh, you know, estimate, uh, you know, how many time constant that, uh, you know, that uh, the charge will remain on how much is remaining uh, on the capacitor or, or has left the, uh, the capacitor. So in this experiment, uh, there are two different RC circuit you'll be, uh, you know, you'll be dealing with, and uh, and the uh, the diagram will look like this. So so you'll have the resistor, you have a capacitor, and because this the capacitor you'll be uh, you'll be given uh, has polarity. So the positive is always positive, and this dashed line indicates the negative. So you have the power, which is uh, you know the the power is coming from uh, the power. So you have the negative here, you have the positive here, and these two are Connect to the power supply, and the whole thing here is in series. And then, uh, and then you have the uh, this is what we call a double uh, double pole double throw uh, switch. And then when you switch up, when you push up, it's going to uh, do the charging. And when you switch down, it's going to uh, go. Uh, it's going to undergo a uh, discharging process. So that's basically you know you push out, you push down. Now when you do this experiment, of course uh, you want to make sure that no fingers of your hands. No, uh, no fingers, no part, no part of your fingers should touch the uh, uh, the circuit, the metal part of the uh, of the circuit, because uh, you know if you uh, accidentally touch the metal part, then the charge can actually uh, the charge will uh, leak through uh, your body. So, so when you do this this experiment, uh, you know you just have to be extra careful that no part of your body should be touching uh, the uh, the circuit, the metal part of the circuit. And so, uh, so, so the uh, the power supplies from you know they will provide the power supply. So let the two RC circuit uh, undergo charging and discharging process, and then you would uh, and then uh, and then you will get the data, and uh, and then uh, and then you're going to uh, you know uh, you know if we were to do the experiments, you would use the uh, building function to actually find out the the fitting equation for the charging and discharging part. However, um, because we don't have the uh, the program to use the software program to use, you'll go uh, you're going to use Excel to analyze data. So uh, so with this uh, alteration, this changes, uh, you know. So you still want to read the uh, analysis part just to get a better idea. But then uh, uh, you know the data you'll be given, you will have uh, you you'll be doing. A, there's a little bit changes. First of all, we're not. You're not going to do this, okay? 
So you don't have to fill out the, uh, you know, this part because the capacitor value will be given. So that is that. And then, so during this uh, data analysis, you'll still be doing these two circuits. Okay, the uh, you know, one is, uh, one is the, um, one is this. This circuit, you have the RC given, and one is this circuit. So you're still using this two circuit, okay? And then uh, we're not doing the discharging. So no discharging, no discharging, okay? We don't do that. And uh, so that will be same thing for the other circuit, no discharging. So, so the, uh, the experiment, the data you'll be given are for the charging process, all right? So let me bring out the, uh, uh, the data. The, day, the data will be uh, in text file. So, and the first column indicated time. So uh, it's from one second all the way to 40 seconds. And the first, uh, the first, the first circuit, which is the, uh, the, uh, uh, R, the, uh, the C is 1000 microfarad and the, uh, the R is 10 kilo ohm. That is your circuit one. And this is the, the voltage across the capacitor. So as a function of time, and the second circuit is the um, uh, has the uh, the uh, uh, capacitance of three thousand three hundred microfarad, and the resistance of three point three kilo ohm, and this is for uh, the second circuit. Okay, and this is also uh, for the charging process. So what you would do is that use uh, use this to use this uh, to data set. And you are going to, let me give you, you are going to create two plots. One is, one is VC as a function of time, okay, for the two circuit. And you would expect that, uh, you know, it is something like this, okay. You don't do anything about this. Uh, this is just for uh, the plotting. And the second plot is that the goal is to find the, uh, the time constant experimentally. So how do we do that? Because Excel does not let you fit this kind of function. So we need to actually do something, uh, you know. So if you remember the equation is this, Vc as a function time is equal to v, uh, Vs and then one minus e to the minus t over tau okay so the vc here v uh, vs here the vs here is uh, let me see okay we can talk about that later i can't remember what value i use but um so in order to do find tau uh, we need to do several uh, we need to do this first of all you would uh you would do this use excel Vs is a constant that's equal to one minus e over this. Okay, and I'm going to move this to the other side. So you have this. That's equal to one minus this value, which is given the data, and then Vs. Okay, and then you're going to do a natural log on both sides. So once you do that, I'm going to call this okay. And then, so what you have is that you're going to you are going to generate a plot that is on the on the vertical. This is your vertical. Use Excel to calculate this value, and that should be your vertical. And then uh, horizontally, you're going to plot. You're going to plot time. Okay, so you're going to get this. And the slope. The slope is the slope. Uh, is your experimental value of one over negative one over tau. So whatever slope that you have, just based on this, you can calculate your tau value. Okay, so that's basically what you want to do. 
you uh, use Excel to calculate this quantity, and then uh, you uh, and then you're going to plot. You're going to plot this quantity. You're going to plot this quantity versus time. And once you have that, then uh, you know the slope is equal to one over one over tau. And so your tau value, uh, you know, is uh, so the slope is is going to give you the experimental value of tau. So it's just uh, your experimental value of tau would just be equal to negative one over slope. Okay. And then so that is, is your experimental value. And then you're going to compare to your, you're going to compare to your theoretical value. Theoretical value tau will just be equal to RC. Okay. So you'll just be doing the uh, the charging process. All right. So let me let me see. Uh, let me see the uh, so V uh, so the VS the VS value. Let me see. So the VS value should be. Let me see. The VS value should be. Let's see. What value do we? So the VS value is five, okay? So the, uh, the VS value is five and the VC is given and the time is given. So based on that, you will be able to deduce, you'll be able to deduce um, the, uh, uh, the uh, experimental value of, uh, of tau and then compare to your theoretical value to, uh, to get a percent error. So we'll just be doing the charging part. We're not doing the discharging part. and and for the uh, the filling equation, for the filling equation, uh, you can write down the filling equation, uh, you know, in this uh, in this spot, and also uh, for the second circuit as well. Okay, so that's basically what you want to do.